Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about how to store zippers by the yard, various fabrics that I've added to my stash. We'll be taking a vote to see which of the new patterns will be featured in the next sew along. The book review will be for a book called A Quilter's Guide to Solids and I will also be demonstrating how to make grommet handles. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. I see Dalva's watching from Puerto Rico. Uh, Ravi says hello Sarah and Danny. And Jean is watching from Ontario, Canada. So welcome everyone to Social Sunday. I'm so happy that you're joining me and just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, notions, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So a couple weeks back on the show, there were some um, inquiries about how to store zipper by the yard. So if you don't have a separate drawer to store it or perhaps um, a plastic container with a lid where you can store the zippers by the yard or your zippers either um, rolled up individually or stored in perhaps color groups um, with the zipper pulls, um, I went online last week and tried to find uh, a couple of solutions for storing your zippers by the yard. So um, first I'm going to share with you um, a hanger that I picked up a few days ago and then um, I'm also going to share with you another solution, so a couple different options. So um, the first option is this hanger that I found. It's for hanging pants actually, but as you can see the zippers by the yard, um, I put a few over here just so that you can see what they look like. And I'm going to have Danny switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you um, a particular aspect about this particular hanger. So what I liked about this one is that each of the rows you can take off, which makes it really handy to take the, the zipper off and then put it back on. Some of the hangers that I was looking at had uh, more static rows, but this one I like that these are movable. <clears throat> we actually ship our zipper by the yard with rubber bands and so I tried installing the zippers on the hanger a couple different ways and it actually ended up working the best um, in my opinion just putting them on there um, as we ship them with the rubber band. I did try to coil the zipper around the hanger but um, it didn't stay in place, it didn't stay in a nice coil. And then um, my bigger pieces of zipper by the yard, it tended to take up a lot of space. So I kind of like this method and overlapping the zipper rows, you can still see what the zipper looks like, the tape as well as uh, the teeth. Um, so Danny's gonna switch back to the overhead camera and he's going to Here post, um, sorry, front camera. <laughs> And he's going to post a picture. Um, this is something that I talked about on the show maybe three or four years ago. Um, I got these um, two wooden hooks for hanging either belts or neckties. And it's actually mounted to the side of my work table. And I use just command strips um, to stick them to the side. And um, if, yeah, thank you, Danny. You read my mind. As you can see, that works out really great too. So I guess it depends on um, what you have available in your workspace, um, if the hanger works for you, um, or perhaps that um, belt and tie rack. Um, of course, if you already have a plastic container or a drawer, um, there's a few different options, but I wanted to share those options with you in case um, you have some zippers by the yard that you need to um, keep organized. So um, we are approaching our so long for um, one of the brand new four patterns and we put it to a vote a few days ago in the Facebook group, but I also wanted to post uh, a separate vote for the live show because I know not all of you are on Facebook. So these are, the, uh, just to recap, these are the four newest patterns. And we're going to start by having a sew along for one of them. And Danny has placed a link in the description 
where um, you'll find sort of a, a live poll and you can vote for your choice for the sew along. So basically your favorite of the four patterns and we'll be keeping track throughout the show and near the end Danny's going to post the results and we'll combine those with the results from the Facebook group and um, get going on a sew along. So uh, feel free to check that description so you can vote uh, before the end of tonight's show. So before I share with you the new fabrics that I've added to my stash, I have quite a stack over here. One of them, or actually two of them, are laminated fabrics. So my question is preceding that. Have you ever used laminated fabric before, either laminated fabric that you've purchased or perhaps you've laminated your own with um, another products like maybe OD coat or an iron on clear vinyl? So let me know in the comments um, if you've worked with laminated fabric before for either bags or pouches. All right, so let's move over to all of these fabrics that I've added to my stash. And as usual, um, I've linked to all of these in the description. So if any of them catch your eye, then you can uh, find links to purchase them if you're interested. So the laminated fabrics first. These are both from um, Splash Fabric and I've purchased laminated fabrics in the past, but these are probably the nicest laminated fabrics um, that I've actually purchased. They're nice and thin, flexible, so the, lamin the, the top coating doesn't make it stiff. It's still nice, flexible, thin to work with. Um, they had some really fun prints like these dogs. I thought these were pretty adorable, and the dogs came in different background colors. Um, Danny is going to post um, a couple pictures. Bronwyn has actually made some lunch bags from fabrics that she got from Splash Fabrics. So Danny's going to post um, Bronwyn's photos on the screen. As you can see, she used the laminate for the inside as well as the outside. And these were the lunch bags in the peas and corn sewing pattern. And um, I wrote a couple of notes down about uh, the laminated fabrics. Um, so they are actually food safe. They follow FDA um, specifications for that. Um, they use a water-based urethane for those laminated fabrics from Splash Fabric. Um, they, are, they have an eco seal and um, you can iron on the wrong side of the fabric. You can wash them, but since they are laminated and water resistant, um, it's quite easy to just use a damp cloth and just wipe them clean rather than washing them every single time. So um, they have more prints available. Those were just the two that I picked up. Um, and then moving on to the non-laminated fabrics. I got these really cute prints. These are from Camelot Fabrics and I take note that I often have really large scale prints, medium to large scale prints in my stash because that's generally what I like to work with. But when it comes to, to sewing pouches, sometimes I just um, are, I'm lacking on the smaller prints. So this one actually goes this way. These are little gummy bears. And then <laughs> these are really cute. These are balloon animals. As you can see, they're all smaller prints. This is the same, just in a different background color. And this is the last one that I picked up from this particular fabric line. All of the colors are sort of pastelish colors, um, summer hues, I guess you could say. And then I had these two, these were designed by Christy Leah. And I have some others designed by her in my stash. For some reason, I picked these up a little bit later. So I, I super love this one with the clamshells on it. And then the last set of fabrics is from a fabric line called Leaf. And um, actually I actually have one more besides that. And so I'm going to flip through all of these so that you can see the different colors and this bundle fabric is actually going to be part of the giveaway at the end of the show, so uh, stay tuned for that giveaway at the end. I love the colors. I, like, I love that they're all earthy tones. And I like that they're sort of, they're not large scale prints, so they would be good in a quilt as well as a bag. Super love this particular colorway of this print. And then I'll, I'll start stacking the other prints on the top. I also like this one. This one's kind of frosty appearing to me at least. And then this print is my favorite from the line. 
I love the cream colored one the most, but the other ones are pretty great also. This one's sort of a, I think you can probably see it on the camera. It's sort of like a white on white print. I don't usually go for browns, but I really like this caramel color in this print. And then there's a few more. These are sort of plaid type prints. Super love this black and white one. Okay, so these were all part of the leaf fabric line. And then I just have one more fabric that I picked up. This was sort of a, a one-off print that I picked up, but I really loved it. It's from the fabric line called Swedish Christmas. And I love the birds. I love the, it's sort of a, a faint wood, wood grain background. Um, and there also is, I didn't pick it up, but there also is a large panel print with um, some smaller panel prints, which would I think be good for placemats, but it's part of this um, Swedish Christmas fabric line. So again, all of these are linked to in the description in case any of those caught your eye. And um, in honor of this bird fabric, I'd like to know, I have another question for you. Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite bird? So one of my, I think it's probably at the top of my list, but um, this chickadee is uh, probably my favorite backyard bird. Uh, I really love them. They're cute, small. I love their um, different chirps and calls. And so chickadee is probably my favorite. So um, the book review for this week is a book called A Quilter's Guide to Solids. And Danny's going to switch over to the overhead camera so that I can share this with you. There's a few quilt patterns included in the book. It's sort of a slim volume, but um, that's all that's necessary for um, the quilts uh, that are featured. So. At the beginning, um, it shows uh, sort of a snapshot of all the patterns that are included in the book. Um, I really love using solids for quilts, and so this book is right up my alley. So let me share with you what all of the quilts look like. And they also give you um, different um, color variations for each of the designs, just so you can see them pictured in uh, with different ideas. This is my favorite quilt in the book. Um, even though there's this color variation, I super love the main quilt with the rainbows. Um, this is the quilt that I actually bought this book for. Um, I also love this. I love the intersecting colors, just like the previous quilt. In fact, I really love this um, cream colored. Um, I think I will make this one also. This one's called White Caps. And then there's one more pattern included in the book and this one's called Hoops with the, the three circles. And there are full color illustrations for the steps. And um, even though this is uh, a brief book, I, I really liked all the patterns in it. And again, the book is called A Quilter's Guide to Solids. And the link um, to purchase the book if you're interested is in the description. So. Uh, Danny's favorite part of the Social Sunday show. We'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. Um, Danny and I appreciate your support and um, thanks for tuning into the show. My demonstration for tonight is it's been some years since I made a bag with grommets where the, the handles or straps are actually threaded through the grommets as sort of a design feature, but I pulled this one um, out of the bag stash and I wanted to share with you an idea for a different way to insert your handles. So I have this bag. This bag is actually from my second book, Windy City Bags. And as you can see, I've got my grommets installed. So the thing about this particular application for the grommets is you don't install the grommets until the bag is pretty much all completed because the grommets have to go through the exterior and the lining fabric, the bag gets finished and then you install them, which is maybe a teeny bit nerve wracking because you're making holes through your fully finished bag, but you certainly can practice first on a scrap of fabric before you install these. I installed these grommets using my tabletop rivet press, but there's a few options out there for grommets, including handheld presses, and I've also seen and also used grommets where you um, sort of just snap them into place. Um, those particular grommets I found in the 
um, curtain or upholstery section of my local fabric store. Um, what else was I going to say about these grommets? So Danny will switch to the overhead so that I can um, show you these grommets. These particular grommets are one inch wide and uh, what else was I going to say about them? Let me um, unzip the bag so that you can see that the grommet goes through both layers of the fabric. So the thing about these grommets is you want to leave at least a one inch clearance from the top of the grommet to um, the unfinished top edge of the bag um, because you need to leave room for top stitching and basically you just don't want that grommet so close so that it's sitting like right up against your top stitching. So leave at least one inch and depending on the bag that you're working with, uh, you'll want to consider the placement for how far apart you want them um, if you're working off a pattern, you can consider where that particular pattern, um, how far the straps are in in the pattern, and you can use that as a guide for how far in you will install uh, the grommets. Um, I also have a link in the description to my rivet press video in case you would like to see um, how I install grommets on my rivet press. Um, again, that link is in the description. And uh, for my straps for this particular bag, I just cut and sewed two pieces each 40 inches long and I attached them using just a seam sewing them right sides together to make one long strap because um, this handle will just be threaded through the front and back of the bag and so we only need the one piece of the strap. I top stitched um, the center of the strap piece and then I actually unpicked these ends but you will be leaving these ends unsewed because we need to have the ends loose for threading the strap and then when we're done we'll finish the strap and um, enclose all of the raw edges and finish the top stitching. Okay so here's here's the bag. I've got my my strap piece and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and start threading it through the bag. So I'm just going to pick a side, um, enter this. Oh I also wanted to mention you want the width of your finished strap to be able to fit in the inner portion of the grommets and so um, my strap is pressed like double full bias tape so four layers of the strap piece so you'll just want to calculate my strap finishes three quarters of an inch wide and so multiplying that by three that's three inches so you'll just need to calculate that for um, the particular grommets that you're using so I'm just going to go ahead and thread that through one side bring it through the opposite, uh, so the front of the bag making sure that that uh, strap piece stays so that it's not twisted and then you can pull about um, half of it through approximately half of it through and we'll be um, sort of finessing the length of the strap um, later when we're done with uh, connecting the other end so again making sure it's not twisted we're going to insert it through the opposite end and you don't need to pull it all the way through because you need to have some of this handle uh, Kind of pulled out on the front and the back. Okay, so let me switch to the overhead so that you can see how I insert this. Um, this is the last grommet that it's going through. Okay, so I'm just going to pull, so I have approximately equal amounts on this side and on this side. So now what we need to do is we need to finish the raw edges of the strap piece. So I left a couple of inches unsewn on either side and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and sew these so that they're right sides together. So where's my wonder clips? Here we go. Okay so you're just going to sew this end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then when that end is sewn you're just going to press this last two inches on either side just like you did with the, the rest of the handle piece and then finish the top stitching. So once this top stitching is completed you have just the continuous length of the strap and then all you need to do is pull it through both sides so that you have approximately equal amounts um, of the strap sewing on either end because you want your handles to be even and then um, the bag is finished. Okay, so basically that was a, a creative way of using grommets um, and you could also, if you wanted to have the strap threaded on the side panels, you'll just want to take into consideration that um, you do see the strap coming through the lining of the bag like you can see here. So um, you'll just want to make sure that works for the design of the bag that you're working with and 
Um, again, just another way to creatively use grommets in your bag. All right, so I think um, Danny has been collecting votes. So Danny's going to go ahead and get a graphic together so that we can post it on the screen Only to see. Votes in so far. Okay, so do you want to leave the votes up a little bit longer? All right, so. They look till now the ones to vote. Similar. Okay, so we're going to, to allow some more time for some extra votes to come in. So if you'd like to vote for your choice for um, the next sew along out of one of the four new patterns, the link is in the description and you can just click that link and vote for your choice. Uh, we'll check in with Danny again near the end of the show. Um, but I'm, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to answer some questions live. So if you have a question for me, let me know in the comments. It can be a general sewing question, bag making question, question about a notion or tool. Type your question in the comments right now, um, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch our show. And um, before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. And that winner is Rebecca Travis. So congratulations to Rebecca. Please email me after the show. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. All right, Danny's going to um, pull some questions out for me. Um, Evelyn says, uh, today birthday bag lady embracing 61. Um, happy birthday to you, Evelyn. I hope you had a fantastic day today. Um, Joan says, have you ever used rectangular grommets? I actually, um, I'm not sure if this is what you mean, but I have sort of like oval shaped grommets um, for handles. I actually have that on my list for a future demonstration. Um, I actually haven't personally used them, but I just bought them and they've been sitting in my stash. So um, I should be getting to those soon. Um, Betty says, how do you vote? I don't see a poll. Um, put in comments and I'm putting it in the comments. Okay. Um, Danny, uh, there's a link in the comments, um, so if you'll check for that, and he said he would also pin it to the comments. Um, okay, so it should pop to the top of the comments. Just uh, overhead, they should be able to click and make it easier. Okay. Both Facebook and YouTube. Okay, Danny said he pinned that link to vote um, at the top of the comments also, so uh, look for that. There are uh, a couple different options for voting. Ruth says, I can remember you once mentioning about a posture strap. Do you still use it and did it work? Recently feel my posture is not good and getting back pain. I, um, the name is escaping me off the top of my head. It's on my um, chair over there by my desk. Um, it is good for, um, it sort of had like a, a weighted bag at the back, um, which helped as a reminder for keeping my posture in the, a, a good position. Uh, feel free to email me after the show and I'm happy to get you the link. Um, we do also, um, if you follow Soul Sweetness on Pinterest, we do also Bronwyn pins all of the things that I talk about during Social Sunday. So if you're ever not sure, if you think, oh, there's that one book Sarah talked about on Social Sunday. I can't remember the name, but she talked about it last week. Um, it'll also be pinned on our Pinterest board as well. Um, Laura says, what is the name of the pink horse fabric? Um, this fabric um, is designed by Melody Miller. So um, it comes in a few different colorways. I have another print from this um, design and it has a bright blue background, which is really awesome. Um, I like this one too a lot though. Um, Tammy says, are you supposed to interface the side panels of the Stingray bag? It's not listed on the pattern. Um, this side panels are sort of wrapped around the foam um, I can't remember off the top of my head if there was interfacing. Um, there might not have been since it was wrapping around the foam, but I, I sort of think there was. I can, I'll have to check the pattern certainly after the show. Uh, but if you do need any help, um, you can always email me. Uh, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. Oh, Shirley says um, it's her birthday today too, also 61. Happy birthday to you, Shirley. Uh, Teresa says, question, how sturdy are the wire frames? I've been wondering if they bend easily. Um, I think, let me check the chickadee bag behind me. I do have frames in them, but I, I think I can probably pull the frame out a little bit to try to bend it. Maybe I'll just leave it in the backpack and try to bend it. They can bend, but I really have to try my very hardest to bend them. So they don't bend easily, like they wouldn't bend if they, if say the bag just sort of fell to the floor or 
knocked up against something, you really have to put forth a, a lot of effort to get them to bend. Carla says, do you feel that using steam when ironing SF-101 helps with it adhere better? Um, you know what, I'm going to be honest, I have not um, done a, sort of a scientific comparison on if the ShapeFlex interfacing adheres faster or better with steam or without. I guess I just usually often use steam just because it's sort of my habit. Um, I guess I'll, I'll write myself a note, maybe I'll check. Um, if I'm able to check, I'll let you know next week on the show, though. Steam. Um, Angel says, how does a solo long work? Oh, that's a great question. So um, I wrote a few notes. Um, because there's already a video for the Chickadee backpack, there won't be any additional video instruction content per se. Um, but um, there will be um, weekly accountability. So every week I'll give you a task, depending on what the pattern is. And um, because the results will sort of be a surprise, I, I've um, compiled uh, for each of the four possibilities just in case. So there will be week weekly accountability as, far, uh, as well as weekly prizes. Um, I'll have a post every week on my blog where you can submit your progress photos for that week's task. Um, and you can also, if you are in our Facebook group, you can also check in with your group with the group, if you have any questions, um, you can post your questions in the group, and um, I'll be an I'll be sure to answer them um, as well as um, addressing any relevant questions on the show. And also, um, some people like to make modifications to the pattern, and if there's any modifications, I've already seen some modifications. Um, Camille posted a really awesome one earlier this morning, and so um, we'll be posting photos, um, inspiration. Um, ideas for changing up the pattern a little bit if you'd like to and so um, we'll also have a big prize at the end for um, anyone who's completed their bag to be eligible for so um, more details depending on which pattern is chosen uh, will be posted we'll let you know on the live show in the Facebook group as well as in the newsletter um, all of those details um, Melissa says how much fabric do you buy when buying for your stash that's a great question. Um, I usually buy one yard pieces um, if I'm intending that fabric to be used for a bag. Um, that laminated fabric that I purchased just because I thought I might make little lunch bags. I just bought a half yard, but it's quite a large piece and I can get a ton of lunch bags out of this laminated fabric. Um, I have a few, a small amount of bag patterns that use over a yard, such as one and a half yards, but I would say that maybe 90% of my patterns um, use one yard of fabric or less. Marge says, do I need an industrial machine to sew a bag? Um, an industrial machine is nice, but not necessary. A home sewing machine, um, especially one that can handle layers well, will be just fine for bag, ma bag making. And in fact, I've, I've actually never sewn on an industrial machine. I just wanted to keep myself realistic as far as uh, my pattern designs for bags. Diana says, do you have any idea when the rainbow triangle rings will be back in stock? I want to finish my sewing machine tote. Thank you. So I did just place a um, couple days ago um, a hardware order. Um, I will say that um, orders coming from overseas are encounter encountering since the pandemic lots of delays. So um, I'm, I'm so sorry we're out of that particular color. I think we had the other colors in stock, but um, I can't imagine that we'll be getting the hardware order in probably at least a couple of months, maybe more, just because, like I said, everything is delayed triple the amount of time that it's usually taken to get um, items in. Janet says, have you used automotive headliner instead of flex foam? Would you use a spray adhesive to make sure it stays connected to the fabric? Um, I've gotten little samples of automotive headliner, but I have not used it for a bag, and so um, the, auto, the thing about the automotive headliner, it usually does not have the thin layer of fabric on the top and the bottom, which makes it um, nice and easy to go through the sewing machine. Generally, it's sort of like a naked foam. Um, so the flex foam or other foam interfacings um, generally have that, that thin layer. Um, I have not personally used um, spray adhesive or um, quilting spray to attach fabric to the foam. Um, I've heard of people doing that, but um, I haven't personally done it, so I'm not sure of the results. I usually use Biani Soft and Stable, which is a sew-in, and I usually just um, machine base my fabric to the foam. All 
All right, um, that's the vote voting so far for um, the so long choices. Um, as you can see, the chickadee backpack is um, well ahead of the other patterns. And um, this is also what we are seeing in the Facebook group. So um, Dane, are you closing out the voting now? Yes. Or is that just a, okay. So um, it looks like the chickadee backpack will be our so long choice. Um, we may do additional patterns um, depending on what things look like as far as the schedule, but um, I prepared graphics for all four depending on which one won. And um, since we're, we'll be doing the chickadee backpack, here's the outline of the weekly tasks. So it's a four week so long, so breaking it up into small chunks, small manageable chunks, especially for those that are really busy. Um, as you can see, week one, we're only working up to step number 10, so nice and manageable. And every week you'll have a chance at some prizes and um, I will update you every Sunday on the show as well with that next week's task and um, a link to the blog post where you can post your progress photos. And if you find yourself working ahead, just make sure to take progress photos along the way. So um, those will be your entry for that week's uh, prizes, so to speak. And I'll have full details on the blog as well. And the last day um, to enter a photo of your finished bag is November 15th. So you have quite a few weeks to complete this project and I've already been seeing lots of really great looking chickadee backpacks come through in our Facebook group. I think um, I was certainly really excited designing this particular pattern. Um, I think it can hold a lot. Um, it has padded straps so even, if, even though it is holding a lot it's still a comfortable backpack and um, just backpacks are great for so many different things. Great question Jody. Jody says can a beginner do this backpack? I think Especially with, um, so first of all, the PDF patterns um, include full color step photos for just about every step. I think um, beginners or um, confident beginners, um, either of those two might be interested in the optional video that's available for purchase. And in the video, I make the entire project. So you see me uh, cutting out my paper pattern pieces, attaching the interfacing, and so um, if you are more of a visual learner or just like to have someone um, to sort of virtually sew along with, um, the video option is there for you. And um, yeah, I think it's certainly doable by, uh, for just about every skill level. Sue says, hello from British Columbia, Canada. First time live. Thank you. Welcome, Sue. Thank you for tuning in live. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. Um, Julie says, cool. Where, the, where will this be posted? We will post... Um, that graphic on social media. I'll be posting that information on my blog. Um, we'll be sending it out in the newsletter when we send out the newsletter out in a few days. So um, you'll have a few different um, chances, different ways to see uh, that information. Roxy wants to know, do you carry the frame? Yes, I do have the frame in my shop for the chickadee backpack. The frame is uh, 10 and a quarter by two and three quarters and it's available right now in the shop and we have plenty of them in stock. Wanda says, uh, where, when, and how do you search for new fabrics? Um, I think there's a couple ways that I try to stay uh, up to date with new fabrics that are coming out. I follow some designers and fabric manufacturers on um, social media, such as Instagram or Facebook. Um, for instance, I just noticed this morning that Robert Kaufman, which is a manufacturer, was posting some new fabric lines on their social media. So that's one way to do it. I also follow um, or I receive newsletters, email newsletters from a few of my favorite fabric shops. And um, some of my favorites, by the way, are um, uh, Hawthorne Supply Company, Stash Fabrics is another one, um, Brew Stitched is another and also fat quarter shop. So if you go to basically any of those fabric shops websites, there should be a link somewhere on their site to sign up for their newsletter. And um, anytime they receive new fabrics, then they send newsletters such as Hawthorne Supply Company sends out a newsletter just about every week. And I really look forward to getting their newsletter because um, they usually have some new things that I'm interested in as well on their websites and other websites. They have sections for um, new arrivals or what's coming soon and I um, if I'm bored and I just want to look at fabric I go to the website and check out what's coming soon and um, just keep my eye out for things that I want to order. 
Rhonda says, are the dates for each week of the song along the beginning or the end for the steps listed? That's a great question. So the dates listed on that graphic were when the assignment for that week starts. So basically, um, Dean, can you put that graphic on the screen one more time? Which one? The uh, sew along with the dates on it. There we go. And can you remove that little comment? No. on? <laughs> so for example, week one, week one starts on October 17th. So you have that whole week. Um, uh, to complete that task and um, take a picture and be entered in for that week's um, prizes. Um, if you ever fall behind, no worries. You still have until uh, November 15th to finish the bag. And um, I will be using those progress photos to draw winners every week. Um, but like I said, um, this should be low stress and um, we should have fun um, sewing this project. Um, so you do not have to do Facebook in order to participate in the Sew Along, correct? Yes, that's exactly right. Um, I will be posting the information on my blog as well as um, you will be entering uh, your photo of your progress for that week on my blog so you don't have to be part of the Facebook group. Um, and I'll be letting you know on the live shows what that week's task is um, just to serve as a reminder. Hey Vanessa, Vanessa says beginners get the video even if you think you won't need it, so much easier to reference steps if you need it. Thank you, Vanessa. And I should also mention that all of our videos um, have timestamps. So what that means is all of the steps, there's sort of like a little uh, bookmark. There's a little circle for the step that um, if you, for instance, if you only need help with say step 15, rather than watching the whole video, all you have to do is click on the little graphic for step 15 at the bottom of the video. There's sort of like a timeline at the bottom of the video with little dots and you'll just find the one for step 15, click on it, and you can just watch the video portion for that particular step. Of course, you can watch the whole video if you'd like to. And in fact, I saw someone recommending in the Facebook group that she watches the video before even starting on the pattern. She likes to watch it at least once all the way through just to sort of get a feel for what's expected. And then she'll start reading the pattern and cutting out her pieces. So um, that's great advice also. Chris says, can I just buy this one pattern? Yes, it's available now on my website. Um, if you're only interested in the PDF pattern, you can buy just the PDF pattern by itself. If you would like the pattern and the video, that option's available and you can find all that at sosweetness.com. Um, you can either look in my uh, shop in the pattern section or it will be at the top of the list in the what's new section um, in my shop as well. Um, Elaine says, how do I find your blog? Um, you can just go at go to sosweetness.com. There's a few tabs along the top and there's one for blog, or you can just type in um, sosweetness.com backslash blog. Melissa says, have you used marine vinyl for your bags? I do have marine vinyl in my stash. Um, it is, um, out of all of the vinyls that I currently own, it is the thickest and so um, I might have only used it once or twice, um, but um, if you're using marine vinyl, depending on the project, you might um, consider possibly um, either reducing or eliminating the interfacing. Again, depending on what you're making. If you're making a small pouch, um, I have a bunch of marine vinyl pouches with no interfacing just because it is thicker and it provides a lot of structure. Um, but again, that might depend on the particular project that you're making. Um, question, question. I have used the curtain snap together grommets from the fabric store but I wonder if they would hold up to holding bag straps. They are usually plastic. I have used those same plastic grommets. They're quite larger. They're plastic and they just snap together. I actually made a similar bag to this one, um, but with obviously the bigger grommets, the plastic ones, and I have not had a problem with them snapping out. Mary says, where do I buy the rolled handle, handle templates from your video? Um, we have a free PDF that you can download for the rolled handle templates. I actually think I have yet to list that acrylic, I know this sounds super silly, but I think I am sitting, have been sitting on those acrylic templates for the rolled handles for a few months and I just haven't listed them in the shop. So I'm gonna write a note to myself. Um, maybe I can get that taken care of tomorrow. <laughs> Um, do you think, uh, oops, thank you. I was a little too slow. Uh, Marilyn says, I can't find the frames for the Chickadee. Um, if you actually go to the product listing for the Chickadee backpack, 
At the end of um, that um, product listing, there is a supply list um, and the frames should be listed in the supply list. And if you click on the text for the frames, um, that, that is a clickable link and it should take you to um, the links for uh, the backpack. Do you think knotting ends of the straps would work for those grommets instead of one long strap? Yeah, of course. Um, I, th I certainly think it should. Actually, let me take my wonder clips off and let's see about knotting them instead. Um, if you're knotting them, you'll just want to finish um, the ends of the straps so that you have no raw edges showing. So when you're knotting it, just there's no raw edges sticking out. I'm just doing this really quickly. I'm sure you could do a better job if uh, it, it wasn't live. But as you can see, it looks pretty cute with a knot as well. And then you would just, um, as mentioned, uh, you could just have it carry over just on the front and just on the back rather than a continuation um, going through the middle of the lining. Rob says, I'd love to see a best practices video for the commonly used interfacing with all of your tips. Um, I will put that on my list, Rob. Um, I'll also um, make some comments as well as some substitutions for the interfacing, such as um, if you can't find this interfacing, what can you use instead? Um, so I'll try, try to include that in my list. Um, I'll let you know on a future show. Um, I'm not sure if that will be video format or if it would be best as sort of some sort of uh, little chart. Terry says, have you ever used Sofuse Plus? I hear it's comparable to Decoville Heavy. Um, I've actually not heard of that. So let me write that down and I'll investigate that after the show. Jackie says, what is your feelings on the naked foam? So unless you plan, just my personal opinion, unless you plan on attaching, say, ShapeFlex interfacing to the foam, um, just so you have a, a layer to go through your sewing machine, um, the naked foam by itself, um, for instance, if you have your fabric on the top, that layer will be fine. But the underside, if you need to send that through your sewing machine, that naked foam is going to get caught on your feed dogs and it's going to sort of, you're going to be sewing in one place. Um, so even though the naked foam is cheaper, you're sort of getting what you pay for, in my opinion, and it's cheaper for a reason because it's going to be more difficult to work with. Um, Tony says, when will the acrylic pattern become available? Um, if for the chickadee. The chickadee. So the, the chickadee uh, acrylic template is available now, and actually we do still have a few of those in stock. One note about the chickadee acrylic template, and it is also noted in the product listing for that, um, we were not able to make um, a, an acrylic template for the front cutout piece just because it was really big and skinny. And um, I was extremely worried about that breaking either in the mail or if you were using it in your studio, if it fell, it would probably break right away. And so all of the rest of the pieces are included in that set, just not the front cutout. Cut out. And again, that's um, noted in the product listing. Rebecca says, are some number five zippers by the yard different widths? I'm having an issue with this. Um, so the number five is generally having to do with the size and width of the zipper teeth. So I suppose it's a possibility for number five zippers to be different widths, but um, generally they're around the same neighborhood of width. Um, I'm not sure if you're asking that because you're having trouble getting zipper pulls. If you're using uh, different brands or manufacturers of zipper tape with pulls, sometimes they're not compatible. Um, so in case that was the issue. Danny, was there another question that I missed, or? There were comments on the naked foam. Oh, okay. Um, DK says, says, naked foam crumbles onto the machine. Oh, that doesn't sound very good. Caroline says, naked foam, don't do it, such a headache. Yeah, thank you for the backup about the naked foam. Danny, are you calling it on the questions? All right, I apologize if I did not get your question live. We had some really great ones tonight, um, but I will be back again next Sunday. Danny will be joining me next Sunday on the show, so one last thing, um, the giveaway. So we draw our randomly drawn winner for the giveaways out of all of the comments left on the show. We put all the comments from YouTube and Facebook together. So I'm going to give you one additional chance at the giveaway and the giveaway prize will be that um, leaf, that big leaf fabric bundle that I shared earlier when I was showing all the fabrics. Um, so my one additional question for you, you can type it in the comments right now, either on Facebook or YouTube is what is your favorite um, thing to add to a salad? Let me know if you prefer a particular dressing, if you like to add um, an extra veggie to your salad. 
I super love avocado and um, I love adding avocado to a salad. Um, it just makes it taste uh, creamy and I like the extra nu nutrients that the avocado brings. So um, get your comments in right now. I'll be drawing one randomly drawn winner at the end of the day this Saturday and announcing that winner on next Sunday's show too. So good luck to you all. And thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody. Thank you.